Happy Wednesday. I'm Lee Whittier, the Dog Show Mentor, and we're here today with Bruce Schwartz. Welcome, Bruce. I'm glad to be here to talk about Montgomery County. So for everybody who's here today, all our friends, post your name in the chat and don't forget to post your breed and where you're from. And we're going to be asking you some questions today that'll be fun and we want you to join in as usual. So Bruce is president of Montgomery County Kennel Club. He's a longtime terrier man, probably a lifetime terrier man. We have seen some pictures of him showing miniature schnauzer when he was a youth. And uh, now, of course, he shows um, and owns breeds Welsh terriers. So I'm so glad you um, you wanted to be here today to talk about Montgomery County. So for you folks, Akina, welcome. If you've been to Montgomery County yet, how many years have you gone? Or when did you go if you only went once? Who else has been there? So I want to go through the basics of Montgomery County Kennel Club, Bruce, um, for the people who, who don't know uh, maybe they are from a different area, they don't have terriers, and they just don't know what it is. So where is it held, and what are the dates, and just give us a few fun facts to start out with. Okay, so Montgomery County Kennel Club actually started out as an all-breed show in 1911. And then in 1929, they asked the AKC if they could become an all breed show limited to terriers. So most people think of the group shows that we have now, but for 60 years, Montgomery County was the only terrier show that was the only show limited to just terriers. There's also Mile High, I think, Toy Show, which was the same thing. It was an all breed show limited to toys. So that's our uniqueness. Um, other than the other group shows, we actually are able to award a best in show ribbon. And that in itself is um, a thrill for whoever walks away with that. We have Nikki Higgins here from Fort Lauderdale with Karen Terriers. She said, I go to Montgomery every year and have for over five years. Awesome. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you for the support. Jaime Pickel. Nice, nice, good, thank you. And so what, what makes Montgomery County special, in my opinion, is the support that we receive from the parent clubs of the terrier breeds. So this year, I think there are 23 parent club specialties. So these, most of them are national specialties. These are the one show a year that's designated by the breed club, like this is it. We have all our efforts or many of our efforts are put in as this is the highlight of their year for the particular breed. Um, they have sweepstakes, they have offsite events. Um, there, in addition to the confirmation events, there are also performance events, which are specifically aimed at terriers in the region. So 23 national specialties that that's amazing. And all those terriers in one place with the biggest entries. And people come from all over the world, don't they? How, how, what is the farthest um, that someone has ever come that you know of? Well, let's see. Probably Russia, but they won't be oh. here this year. But we do have a lot of people from some of the Eastern countries coming. And, um, you know, last year was very different because we had very, obviously because of the pandemic, very few um, foreign visitors were certainly hopeful that we're going to have a lot more this year. So but I, I think the difference is like, you know, probably second to Montgomery County is National Terrier in England. And I went there this year and it, it just, they don't have the same breadth of quality in all the terrier breeds like Montgomery County has. And it's because so many of the parent clubs 
choose Montgomery County to have their yearly specialty. So that's really what makes Montgomery County unique. All these terrier clubs getting together because these terriers are unique. They don't tend to be big breeds with, you know, we're not like labs that aren't gonna have 800 dogs. So Montgomery County gives a place for all these breeds to have their national specialties. And it also, I think that another thing that because of that, it really makes it special, the educational opportunities for everybody to see the best of all the breeds, young dogs, currently campaign dogs, uh, veteran dogs. This is where all of our dogs want to be seen in terriers. Yeah, there's at every level of individual can go there and learn. I remember when I first went and I first went in 2006 or 2007 and I just wanted to learn about terriers and I got really excited about seeing all these dogs and I would sit ringside and somebody would come up and chat with me who knew something about a breed and before I knew it, I was on about this exciting uh, way to learn about 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 terriers, and it's uh, certainly given me that excitement. We have um, 108 Cairn Terriers, according to Nikki, this year, and Thomas says we're from Charleston, South Carolina, with West Highland White Terriers. We have been to many Montgomerys through the heat and cold, but always a very special place to be. Well, and we appreciate everybody accepting that the weather is going to be what it's going to be. <laughs> and uh, you can be sure there's going to probably be a day where you're, it's not going to be perfect fall weather. Well, that's been my experience. And I've been there when it's 90 degrees. And, and many times I've been there when we're, we've got our, our boots on and our raincoats on, umbrellas out. And the, um, it's... It is just that everyone stays in good humor and are just thrilled at the competition, getting to look at a uh, new breeding stock perhaps, and, and perhaps from a different country. Um, Nikki said that a couple of years ago, her best of breed was from Japan. Um, Thomas says that Montgomery is the best place to catch up with friends from all over the U S and overseas. I remember when I was, watching Cairns a number of years ago, and it was just a deluge. And uh, and I was bemoaning the fact that uh, the Devon had been canceled. And so there were only uh, three days of shows. And the woman standing next to me um, said that she was from France. And I felt really uh, pretty silly for complaining of only coming 3,000 miles and she came across the ocean. So, um, so being the largest and most important terrier show in the world, um, what, what other ways do you find that, I mean, do you think that, I mean, I think that everybody, every dog person should go because I think it, the whole culture, it, it it's really about the terrier culture and what makes each terrier their own breed. Um, and that's what I think, but I, I want to know what you think, Bruce. Do you think okay, everybody so should go? What I, what I think is the great thing about Montgomery County, it's about breeders showing off their breeding stock. It's not about you know, handlers or people campaigning dogs, hoping they can get a best in show or winning the most groups of the year. It's, I want to show my dog. I want other breeders to see my dog. And I hope to win in what is the best competition in my breed in the country and pretty much in the world. So I think that's what really makes it great. It's about breeders who are breeding terriers. They want to show off their dogs. Um, the sweepstakes are winning a sweepstakes is important. So it's not your regular show where you have, I mean, the competition in the group is fantastic, but it's just, it's a fantastic thrill to win the group, but it's not really so much based on that. It's, it's based on breeders showing off 
the best they have in their breeding stock. And I think that's what makes it great. And that's what makes it unique. Yeah. So if someone is looking for a stud dog or looking for a puppy to um, pull as, as an outcross for their own lines, um, a lot of times they can find it there. And and you've also got judges. Um, would you explain about the judges and how they're chosen and who, who they are? Okay. Well, the judges are primarily chosen by the parent clubs. Now, how each parent club judge chooses their judges is, is different. Um, I know I'm familiar. The Welsh Club and the Fox Terrier Club choose their judges pretty much in the same way that everyone is able to nominate in the five to 10 highest nominees for the regular classes and the sweepstakes classes are then put on a ballot and the person with the most votes gets to judge at Montgomery County. Miniature Schnauzers does it the same way and they actually allow the person to select the specialty they're gonna judge. And I would say the top vote getter gets their first choice and it's always Montgomery County because this is the largest entry and it's the most prestigious show. And it's, I think the other thing that's important is many of the terrier breeds, you take Airedale, if you, you take Welsh, Fox Terriers and Lakelands. I think in order to really understand one of the breeds, you have to know all three, the nuances, the differences. And I'm sure that's also true in some of the sporting breeds, but that's what makes Montgomery County great. You can see the best Lakelands, the best Fox Terriers, the best Welsh, the best Irish, the best Airedales, to help people understand what that breed quality should be. Well, and from a non-terrier judge's perspective, um, I one of the reasons that I go every year is that I want to reset my eye to what's really excellent about each breed. I want to see good ones because we train our eyes to good dogs. And then during the year, some of these other dogs are not of the quality that you get at Montgomery County. And uh, Kelly says she's, uh, there are 50 Irish this year. That is that a great entry, Kelly? You tell us, okay. So I wanna put in a, a plug for tonight's open house. There'll be a link in the chat. A dog show mentor is having an open house workshop. We're going to have fun and we're going to have prizes this month. Uh, this month and next month, uh, you'll get the date as time comes on. The link to join in with that will be in the chat as well. Kelly says, above average. Wonderful. So yeah, the overall entry is up this year by about 50 dogs. That's fantastic. So you're over 1300 this year. Right. E even though we have uh, one particular country that's um, not going to be here. So well, and I think, you know, even with gas prices, travel prices, people still make an effort to come to their breed specialties. It's just like, um, I'm sure most people know, like, Poodle Club of America, their specialty is world famous. Everybody supports it. Everybody is there to see breeding stock, to see the best of the breed. And that's the same with Montgomery County. People aren't there. Uh, they're there to show off their breeding stock, to see what other people are breeding, to see what's correct in their breeding, what needs improvement throughout the breed. And, and, and I want to say, really important is to talk to people who have been in their breed for a long time and really understand um, what's correct, not just by what's written in the standard, but what they're looking at and they can tell you what they're looking at. And so if you're new to a breed, if you're a new exhibitor in Irish Terriers, and you want to know more about your breed, you can usually find somebody ringside that knows a lot and can help you move forward in your 
showing and breeding programs. Right. And, you know, I just, when, for many people, unfortunately, their perception is the difference between a Welsh Terrier and a wire is, let's say, mainly coat, coat collar. And that's not it at all. So that's why you see the silhouettes of these dogs. You can better understand what makes the breed that particular breed. Um, Thomas asks, can the breeds be televised so everyone who cannot attend still benefit? Well, some of the breed clubs do televise the breeds. Some of them do Facebook lives. Um, we don't have the wherewithal to bring in, you know, like they do at Westminster, uh, to have professional crews in every ring um, to do that. But if you talk to your breed club, you might want to encourage them to make that available. Yeah, do a live do a live stream even. And and Tyler Crady says, um, Montgomery is not just a dog show; it's an experience. I I second that. Um, the very best terriers and the and the best terrier handlers, breeders, and owners put on a remarkable event, and people like Bruce and his crew. Um, do a fabulous job. Um, but so where are the judges from this year? So each breed club chooses their own judges, but these judges um, in a lot of cases are coming from the UK or from Northern Europe. Uh, where, where are some of the judges coming from this year? That's a good question. One which I haven't paid attention to. <gasps> okay. Um, but I can tell you, you know, we've had judges from all over the world as on the group level. Um, we try to get the best people in terriers throughout the world and to get various opinions. I think that's another thing that's different in, for the most part, you're getting specialist opinions about the breed. You're not getting as many all breed judges judging the breeds. We do have some breed clubs that do select non-specialist judges. I think that's healthy too, to get an outsider's viewpoint. But I think it's also good to have people who are really thoroughly entrenched in these breeds judging them. I mean, you, so, you have something like Birgit Cody doing miniature schnauzers this year, and you know she's handled many best in show winners. She understands the breed. She's been really involved with the breed. And that isn't, that's another thing. That isn't something that you find at your typical dog show, that all of these breeds are judged by really specialists in that breed. Yeah, and the, the Cairn judge is from Denmark this year. <clears throat> um, Tyler says, fabulous point breed experts judging breeds. And the Lakeland judge is coming from Australia, Crystal says. Welcome, Crystal. It, it is. It's um, where we go for shows. There are many people who are already have started uh, the trek. It's really, it really is a trek um, across the country. Many, many handlers, many breeders, many owners are driving or flying across the country starting now, starting next week. Um, to be part of this whole experience. And it's, it's um, yeah, for me, yes, exactly. Crystal and Tyler, it is an experience and it's amazing. And I love, I love setting foot on the grounds and, and feeling the electricity and the excitement. And everybody who's been going for a while sees people who they've gotten to know they only see them once a year. They only see them at Montgomery County. So it's also about relationships and people getting together and having uh, conversations about their breed. So it's, it's, it's watching their breeds, but it's also talking about them uh, with each other to see how they can improve. What are the, what are the good trends and what are the not so good trends that are happening in the different breeds? Right. And, and I think you just, again, I think the difference again is 
you have the specialists and the emphasis is on breed type. It's not on the showmanship, which is more prevalent at all breed shows. It's really about which is the best dog that closely fits the standard for the breed. It, it's, you know, I said it's a, a trek, but it, it's almost a pilgrimage, isn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, it, it's also very much changed. When I first started showing dogs, handlers could fly with 10, 12 dogs, 15 dogs on a flight. And that's another reason why many people are now driving. Um, though that's no longer available. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> Kelly says that um, the Irish Terrier Club usually gets whoever has the most puppy people voting for their judge. Hopefully that will change. Well, you know, I, I can't say, Kelly, whether it will change or not, but <clears throat> that is something that happens in all breeds. And um, so some lucky judge gets to judge this whole entry of beautiful and high quality, beautifully presented, um, beautifully trained and groomed dogs. So, and, and I would say finally as the last question, Bruce, um, and this is a little bit, you know, um, of a tricky question. Um, so about terriers and grooming and trimming, um, how, does that differ? Is there like, it seems to me that, um, people start on their terriers everywhere from a year ahead to 12 weeks ahead, getting their, those coats in condition. This is not something that just, oh, they give them a bath and take them into the ring that these terrier coats have, um, a lot of, of preparation time the length of time it takes to get those coats just right. Can you talk about that a little bit? Cause that's, I find that fascinating. Okay. I think that's one thing that's unique about terriers and terrier coats. You can't fool around. You can't say, oh, I don't feel like doing this. I'll wait till next week. The terrier coat requires constant care. You can't say, um, you know, I'm going to trim the dog. I'm going to let the hair grow up. Not that the other breeds don't require you to take care of the hair, but this requires constant plucking, constant grooming, constant trimming. And it's not, you have to be very dedicated to keeping on top of the coat. Uh, especially, you know, when I first started showing dogs, people would take the coat down, bring a new coat in, you know, show them eight, 10 weeks, take the coat down. Most people are rolling coats now and it requires you constantly have to work the coat to keep new, fresh, good quality hair coming in. And everybody's goal is to have their dogs in absolutely the best condition for Montgomery County. So does the reason that the coats, you know, why why have they stopped? Why have they started rolling coats? I think I know the answer, but I, I just want to ask you. Well, it's very simple. They want to go to more dog shows. Okay, I mean, that's what I, thought. The, yeah. I mean, the, for points and for standings and ratings, you can't really be successful anymore if you're not campaigning the dog every week, you know, on a pretty regular basis. Right. But the thing is, if you, if you decide, you know, if you slough off, you're going to just lose the coat. So that's what makes it different. Um, you can't say, oh, I don't feel like doing it this week. I'll wait till next week. Once you do that, you're going to lose the freshness of the coat, keeping the new good hair coming in. It is It is a totally different culture, the terrier culture. Um, we don't have much time left. Um, I will tell you that um, if you are dedicated and you are a dedicated dog person, uh, apply for Dog Show Mastery Program. Uh, the link to the application is in the chat. Um, if you're not sure whether you're dedicated um, or you're dedicated and you know that you want to do something, uh, we have 90 Days Dreams to Reality, the Jumpstart Program. And um, if you're one of those people who's self-motivated, uh, you can join the premium program 
and those links will be in the chat as well. So uh, we want we want to send you our news for Dog Show Mentor. So please um, go to our website and sign up for the newsletter. That'd be fantastic. We want to keep you up to date. So Bruce, as a closing note, if you could tell anybody anything, what would you tell them? When you come to a dog show, enjoy yourself whether you win or lose. Because if you, if you if you only are attending a dog show and your only pleasure is winning, it's not going to be very much fun in the long run. And I, I mean, I, I'm the first to admit it's a lot more fun to win <laughs> than to lose. But however, there have to be other aspects. There have to be camaraderie, friendships, learning about your breed, learning about other breeds, experiencing things that are, are new or the same, but experiencing the, the dogs in a really positive way and, and learning and making them a part of your life. Well, as always, Bruce, I'm very touched by your words and your wisdom, and um, I greatly value that you came and um, did this for uh, all the dog show people. Well, I, I appreciate the opportunity because I really, I mean, uh, Montgomery County is my passion, and I do really think it's important that um, it's a great event that continues being great. Well, I'll second that. So um, thank every, thank you everyone who's been here and contributed to the chat. Um, and I hope to see you next week. Um, so this is Lee Whittier, the Dog Show Mentor, signing off with Bruce Schwartz, Montgomery right. County Kennel Club. We thank didn't you. get to talk about um, the logo, but we can talk about that another time. Unless you want to talk about it now. <laughs> yeah, I, can, I can tell you, it's really, um, it's of the first Fox Terrier that went best in show at the first Montgomery County Kennel Club. I, I've said Scamp, right? Yes. Yes. Awesome. It's so, so, it's it's so it, beautiful. Scamp gained, it, it, if you look in our catalog, it says Scamp gained immortality when he went best in show at the first Montgomery. So... Oh, I love that. I love that. Immortality. Don't we all yes. wish our dogs were immortal? Yes. I do. Okay. Now we can say goodbye. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bruce. All right.